One of the craziest rap beefs in hip hop history is the King Von and FBG Duck rap beef. These Chicago rappers beef so hard that it caused several deaths, including theirs. Even evidence points to King Von killing FBG Duck or at least being responsible for it. To get to the bottom of it, we have to go through a lot. Planned assassinations, countless diss tracks, and an FBI investigation full of incriminating evidence online. Let's get to it. Rise and fall of King Von. To understand what really happened between FBG Duck and King Von, we have to go to the beginning. Chicago's rap industry has gained notoriety for its violence, and the most infamous feud involved King Von and FBG Duck. Though both have passed away, their diss tracks and plans for violence have lived on. After FBG Duck's death, many questions arose about who was responsible for his murder, which led to evidence involving a kill bounty. First, let's look into the rise of King Von. King Von, also known as Davon Daquan Bennett, was a member of the Black Disciples Gang and hailed from Parkway Gardens neighborhood, which is known for his gang activity and gun violence. He was considered to be the deadliest rapper in the area. Born in Old Block on the south side of Chicago, King Von's life was shaped by poverty and violence. The neighborhood is a no man's land with broken windows and abandoned buildings controlled by rival bands of armed militia. The area was a product of bad politics, failed policy, and official neglect, existing unseen except by those who lived there. Growing up, King Von was a good student who even enjoyed baseball. However, his life wasn't easy. He didn't meet his father until he was about eight years old. Also, his father was frequently locked up on and off throughout his early childhood. His mother and stepfather did their best to provide for him. Despite this, growing up around poverty and violence in the south side of Chicago made it almost inevitable for him to get involved in trouble. Though he denies ever being part of a gang in his younger years, he admits to taking an interest in street life. Like if you would have grown up, if you would have been born where I'm at, you would have been happy in gang bank. Cause that's what it is. Well, you ain't going outside. I wish I never grew up in a project. I wish I a lot of. Shit. I wish my mama had some money. You know, my uh, volume. Shit, I'm adapted to that. Shit. Unfortunately, King Von's grades started to slip after his father passed away, and he turned to crime himself. He started by stealing bikes and other small things, but at the age of 15, he was caught carrying a firearm. He spent time in juvenile detention twice before the age of 18, missing out on most of his teenage years. He wouldn't go more than six months without finding trouble with the law. But Von's run-ins with the law would be small problems compared to what was coming. On May 29, 2014, a man named Malcolm Stuckey was sitting on his porch with two others during a birthday party. Two men approached him with loaded guns and opened fire. Although they they tried to flee down the street, Malcolm was shot in the head and died on the scene. The two others involved were wounded, but later survived. Initially, only one person was arrested for the crime, Michael Wade, also known as Big Mike. But after more evidence arose, King Von found himself potentially facing 100 years in prison for murder and two attempted murder charges. He would spend the next three and a half years in jail. During his time in jail, people he had known since childhood and grown up with would start to blow up through rapping. Lil Durk and G Herbo's careers were on the rise. Though he didn't know whether he would ever be free again, after three and a half years in jail, King Von was released on bond in 2017 after a witness in his case failed to testify. He was determined to turn his life around and stay out of trouble. He focused on his music career and signed to Lil Durk's record label, Only the Family. Wasting no time after being released, King Von began writing his first raps, drawing inspiration from urban novels and his own past experiences. He released his first mixtape, Grandson Volume 1, in 2019, which gained him a lot of attention. He followed it up with the hit song took her to the O. He was on the rise and his talent was undeniable. Although spending so much time in and out of jail was something he never wanted to experience again, he admits it helped shape the person he was and made rapping about it easier. After the release of a few songs, he had already begun to build a fan base. Drill music peaked around 2010 and 2015, and with its popularity decreasing over recent years, King Von's captivating way of telling any story over a beat with what looked like no effort at all would bring a refreshing and much needed new style to the drill scene. What made King Von stand out was his authenticity. He rapped about the life he lived and the experiences he went through. He didn't sugarcoat or glamorize it. He painted vivid pictures with his words, taking listeners on a journey through his life experiences. His music was an extension of himself, and through it, he was able to express his pain, struggles, and triumph. His early single, Problems, brought him some traction, but just a few months later, on the last day of 2018, he would drop his single, Crazy Story, which told the story of a robbery turning shootout and his life would change forever. This song would blow up almost instantaneously, and childhood friend and co-signer Lil Durk wasted no time hopping on part two of the song. After signing to the Only The Family label to further his career and by personal choice, Von would move out of Chicago and relocate in Atlanta. But with fame and fortune, almost always comes beef. It seems trouble was something that always found its way back into Von's life in one form or another. It seemed like every few months or so, Von found himself in a debacle online with another rapper. The most sensational and intense one is FBG Duck, which you'll get to know the full context of soon. In 2020, Von would release two 
more projects, LeVon James, and later, Welcome to O Block. The tape would peak at number 63 on the Hot 100, which is very iconic. By then, he had gained so much popularity, his tapes would feature big artists from all over. He was just beginning to be solidified in the rap game. And then, on November 6, 2020, Von was involved in a shooting that made national headlines. According to GBI, rapper King Von and his group were at Opium Nightclub before making their way here to Monaco Hookah Lounge, then to the parking lot where chaos ensued. Officials confirmed that one of the three people shot and killed was rapper King Von from Chicago, who was at an Atlanta hookah lounge with his friends. What started as a fight outside of the hookah lounge would turn into King Von's fatal last moments. It has since surfaced that the entourage of people behind the shooting of Von was associated with the rapper Quando Rondo. King Von was pronounced dead from gunshot wounds, his career tragically cut short at just 26 years old. Von's hip-hop life was not devoid of a lot of drama. During Von's life, there was a lot of noise that he was responsible for the death of F.E.G. Duck. He was notorious for his exploits that sometimes bordered on murder. In fact, he was called hip-hop's first serial killer in a documentary. The documentary linked King Von to 10 alleged murders, some of which occurred in his hometown of Chicago. The documentary claims that Von committed five of the murders in 2012, two of which took place within weeks of each other in October of that year. The documentary runs for over four hours. Keep in mind that in 2012, Von was just 18 years old. So when one of King Von's biggest ops, FBG Duck, died, there were a lot of eyes on him. Now let's look into the life of the infamous FBG Duck. Life of FBG Duck. FBG Duck, whose birth name was Carlton Weekly, hailed from the Gangsta Disciples gang, GDG, on 63rd Street, which had a long-standing feud with Parkway Gardens. He was a rapper from Chicago, Illinois, who was fatally shot by four gunmen on one of the richest streets in the city. Duck was born in Chicago in 1993 and grew up in the low-end area on the south side of the city. His father was sentenced to 24 years in prison when he was only three years old, and he spent most of his childhood living with his mother and siblings at his grandmother's home. Duck's grandmother was named the Queen of the Low End because of her reputation in the community. She was known for her generosity and kindness towards others, and whenever she moved, the whole family would follow. However, Duck's father's absence forced him to mature faster and take responsibility early on. As a teenager, Duck developed a liking for street life in Chicago. He was known to be a good fighter and was bigger than most kids his age. He used to go to Parkway Gardens to fight, and it was rumored that he had never lost a fight. In fact, in an interview, Duck pointed out that he knew he was a disrespectful person, and because of that, many people wanted to kill him. Duck and his friends were initially known for being big potheads who occasionally robbed small-time drug dealers and did home invasions. However, the fighting wouldn't suffice as a war between the BDs and the GDs was only getting worse, and Duck was stuck right in the middle of it. He brought a lot of guys from other sets around who would later join the game, and he was becoming a well-known member. During this time, Duck became really close friends with a guy called Tuka. Duck met Tuka when Tuka was around 14 years old, and they clicked instantly. It was a beautiful friendship, as Duck would spend nights at Tuka's house and just joke around and have fun. However, in January 2011, Tuka was shot and killed at a bus stop, which left Duck heartbroken. Tuka was so integral to Duck's life that his death marked a turning point for Duck. It made him realize the harsh realities of the street life. Tuka was so integral to Duck's life that his death marked a turning point for Duck. It made him realize the harsh realities of street life. Duck's rise to fame in the music industry began with his affiliation with the Flyboy Gang, FBG, and St. Lawrence, STL Gang. He released Dead which is a diss track aimed at his rival gang. He described his dead ops as dead In one of the lyrics, he says, Made Chicago legends. That was just about business. Said I wasn't going to diss the dead, and okay, I did it. But nigga, T-Roy, and O-D, them dead the song became a local hit and helped him establish a fan base in Chicago's rap scene. He continued to release more songs and his music was known for his raw and gritty lyrics that portrayed the violence and struggles of the life in the streets. Duck was a rapper with a heart of gold. He always wanted his friends to succeed and he worked tirelessly to help them do so. As he became increasingly successful, he continued to put others on, particularly his fellow gangster disciples. Alongside Lil Jojo, he was quickly becoming one of the biggest rappers in the GDs. But when Jojo was murdered in 2012, Duck was determined to keep his friend's legacy alive. Duck took his role as a leader very seriously. He provided his side with the guns and the resources they needed to succeed, and he was constantly working to ensure that everyone around him was taken care of. He was the driving force behind the BBK movement, which made him a major target for rival sets such as Oblot, 600, and others who wanted him gone. He was carrying the weight of the entire block on his back, and he knew that there were people out there who wanted him dead. Despite the danger he faced, Duck never backed down. He was known to be a shooter, and although it's unclear whether he ever killed anyone, he wounded multiple people. 
including T. Roy, who was best friends with King Von. Duck's music career was taking off, and he didn't have as much time to be in the streets as before, but he was still being blackballed by other rappers who didn't want to collaborate with him for fear of cutting ties with his enemies, such as Chief Keith, Lil Durk, and more mainstream 600 rappers. However, in 2017, Duck's life changed forever when his brother and cousin were shot dead on the same day. Duck pulled up to the scene and was shook. He was seeing his oldest brother and cousin laid out in the streets, lifeless. He was staring down at them, knowing he would never speak to any of them. Even for Duck, who was no stranger to the harsh life, it triggered an automatic breakdown. He was devastated and wanted to avenge their deaths, but his mother convinced him to do so through his music rather than in the streets. Because of that, Duck pushed harder. He was basically going to kill his ops with his success. And if any of his songs were an indication, Duck came out guns blazing with his lyricism and flow. He released the song Slide, which became his biggest hit to date with over 70 million plays. The song is considered one of the biggest drill hits of all time, and it finally gave Duck the recognition he deserved after almost a decade of making music. 21 Savage hopped on the remix, making him one of the few mainstream artists to collaborate with Duck. After the success of Slide, Duck signed a record deal worth around $2 million. He was making major history for GD, as he was now making the same kind of money as Vaughn, Lil Durk, and Keith. Some have speculated that Duck tried to stop the war between the GDs and their rivals, but it's unclear if this is true. However, he did release songs like Chicago Legends in 2019, where he paid tribute to legends from both his side and the other side, showing a level of humility that few possess. In the song, he says, I made this track to be fair. It's only right that I talk about both sides. He also goes to say, then again, we ain't gotta be friends. We ain't gotta hang together. We ain't gotta hold hands. For real they gon' respect. Despite his efforts to bring peace, Duck couldn't escape the violence that had consumed his community. On August 4th, 2020, he was shopping for his son's birthday when he was gunned down in broad daylight on the Gold Coast of Chicago. Well, Rob, Chicago police tell me that these three victims were targeted, that four men in two different vehicles came down Oak Street, stopped right here in the middle, and started firing. Fans spotted Duck inside a store with his girlfriend, but he realized he needed to leave before his location was leaked. So he went into the Dolce & Gabbana store to avoid conflict, but it was too late. After he had finished his purchase, he and his girlfriend were leaving the store and were ambushed by gunmen. Duck was shot multiple times and died on the scene. And just like that, FBG Duck's life was cut short. But why did these unknown gunmen kill him? And what does King Von have to do with it? Well, let's take a trip. The beef. As you already know, King Von was born in the Parkway Gardens neighborhood of Chicago's South Side and was raised in an area known as Oblock. This area had a reputation for having a lot of gang activity, especially the Black Disciples group, which he became a part of. On the other hand, FBG Duck was a member of the Gangsta Disciples on 63rd in Chicago. The long rivalry between the members of 63rd and Oblock goes back as far as before King Von and FBG Duck were born. So when these young men started beefing as kids, it was no surprise at all. Things only became well known when King Von and FBG Duck became rappers and shared their gang and beef history through their music. However, the current beef that started a cascade of events that would lead to the death of FBG Duck started in 2011, when a Parkway Gardens teenager killed a 63rd member. It all began when a young teenager from O Block, O.D. Perry, murdered another kid, Shondell Gregory, better known as Tuka. After O.D. killed Tuka, members of the 63rd sought retaliation on the day of Tuka's posthumous birthday. Members of 63rd got their revenge through Jakira Barnes, a aka K.I., their deadliest female shooter. K.I., who was just about 14 at the time, allegedly shot O.D. Perry, and this started a year-long rivalry between the teenagers of O'Block and 63rd. When rappers from each set began dissing members who were killed, the beef became part of the rap industry. FBG Duck took advantage of this and included diss tracks aimed at his dead ops in his music. Parkway Garden members were offended and responded with their own diss tracks aimed at FBG Duck and his gang members. The two engaged in a public battle on the mic, in the streets, and on social media. I smack the shit out you in, OD. You bogus as hell. Damn, you. FBG Duck capitalized on dissing dead ops. In fact, O.D. Perry's name came into the limelight after FBG Duck dissed and mocked his death in a freestyle. Of course, members of Oblock didn't like this very much, so they took it upon themselves to defend O.D.'s legacy. Who's better to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with FBG Duck than a rapper like King Von? On January 9th, 2019, Mimo 600 and King Von collaborated on a track called Exposing Me. In the song, King Von mentions Wooski getting shot in the head and how he's put so much work in in the streets that the Get Back gang tells him to rest, but he's still Strap. I'm still a killer before the rat. I swear I killed her, broke her back. Your homie died. I'm smoking that. I'm tired of smelling Tuka and Lil Mark, and I'm tired of Scrap. He claims to have been a killer before he started rapping, and mentioned smoking Tuka and a bunch of other names of other dead people connected to the 600 beef. King Von even shouts out O Block's DQ as his shooter, suggesting that he will soon be turning somebody into a pack. Mimo 600 also dissed FBG Duck's cousin Ruga, his deceased brother Scrap, and Poppy. It's gonna be a murder. Smoking Scrap, and I got my strap. Long live Burger. Tough as hell 
all on the net, but on their block unheard of. Nah, nah. Pour a four of poppy juice. What's that? That's syrup. In response, FBG Duck and Ruga released their own Exposing Me remix a month later, where Ruga insinuated that SDL and 63rd created O Block. Got some information that you would hate to know. Talk that shit. They don't even know who made the O. Drop a bag on your head. My shooters get paid to blow. He also referenced the murder of O.D. Perry and suggested that O Block members still don't know who was specifically responsible. In the song, Ruga also threw a lot of insults at 600 members associated with O Block. I don't know who to smoke, but I'll take Lil Boo to go. I can see him through the smoke. Call this coming out your crib. Shot him through the dough. Tweaking off the mids. I think Lil Steve coming through the flow. While FBG Duck threatened to visit O Block and dissed other dead rivals who were important to O Block, like Chirac, O.D., and J Money. This feud didn't end with songs and escalated to social media. In the same month of the song's release, FBG Duck claimed in a live video that he used to hang out with King Von as children, but that he and his friends beat up King Von after finding out that he was playing both sides of the games. Gary Ass was playing both sides on Tuga. That's when we whooped his ass and he originally became O Block. FBG Duck even suggested that King Von wasn't truly from O Block, stating that anyone could claim to be from the area, such as Chief Keith. These insults were likely to infuriate King Von, but he was living a luxurious lifestyle away from Chicago and enjoying his success after being taken under the wing of fellow successful Chicago rapper Lil Durk. FBG Duck kept taunting his rivals on Instagram Live, but in 2019, Duck also paid tribute to several fallen Chicago street legends in his music and his song Chicago Legends, something that was unheard of. But King Von didn't really care. He struck back with his his 2020 hit Take It to the O, which contained a fictional scenario where Vaughn confronts a woman who had missed calls from Duck. The song ends with Vaughn shooting Duck and laughing about it. In response, Duck released I'm From 63rd, accusing Lil Durk of only putting Vaughn on to get under Duck's skin. First of all, I don't know no strip from Canna Key, and that in that video, he can't be me. Lil Durk, why you send this little boy to play with me? Why you ain't do that yourself if you got something to say to me? In an interview with DJ Vlad, FBG Duck said he knew a lot of people wanted to hurt him. Well, people ended up hurting him. The death of FBG Duck and his aftermath. On the morning of August 4th, 2020, FBG Duck woke up in a bad mood, making a Facebook status suggesting he was angry about his brother's murder, hoping he would bump into the killer. However, he didn't know he would do that later that day. While shopping in the Gold Coast, he was confronted by four masked individuals who opened fire on him. FBG Duck was shot more than 20 times as he walked out of the Dolce & Gabbana store with his girlfriend, who was also injured in the attack. In fact, some reports said it was 38 shots. FBG Duck had shared his location on social media and hour before the attack, which allowed the old block gang to plan and execute the attack. The shooters had been waiting for FBG Duck in front of the store, and as soon as he walked out, they opened fire, hitting him in the neck, groin, and torso. Aside from his girlfriend, some passerbys were also injured in the attack. The old block gang had been provoked by FBG Duck's diss track, which had mentioned several members of their gang and the rival Black Disciples. FBG Duck had initially claimed that he wouldn't diss the dead, but went back on his word and insulted the old block members who had been killed in the gang war. The diss track triggered the old block gang, and they went out to get FBG Duck a couple weeks after he released the song. After the murder of Chicago rapper FBG Duck, there were concerns about potential retaliation attacks, and the police were monitoring the area. The police knew where the bullets that had killed Duck had come from, and it was likely that the killers may be targeted. However, building a case against them would take time. The aftermath of FBG Duck's death was marked by accusations and finger pointing. Many fans accused King Von of ordering the hit on FBG Duck, as the two rappers had a history of animosity and exchanged threats in the past. However, King Von denied any involvement in the murder and claimed that he and FBG Duck had settled their differences and were planning to work together to improve their community. But then the suspects began dropping hints on social media, which would eventually help the investigation and would lead back to King Von. For instance, a gang member posted a picture of himself on Instagram, making a hand sign that referenced the King Von lyric. Meanwhile, Lil Durk, who had conveniently been out of town during the murder, went on live on Instagram and although he didn't say anything, the comments were filled with the people mentioning the killing of Duck. King Von and Lil Durk later released a song together, and although it didn't exactly mention Duck's death, it was released the day after he died. Additionally, several old block gang members began to disrespect Duck publicly. For instance, Mimo 600 was seen smoking a blunt on Instagram Live, with the comments asking if it was Duck he was smoking. He confirmed this by showing off a custom Duck Cali pack. In August 2020, an interview was released featuring Boss Top from Old Block, surrounded by members of the gang, discussing their lives before the fame and their relationships with King Von and Lil Dirk. However, the interview quickly turned into a self-incriminating session, as
as the group walked onto the block and pointed out where their homies were smoking brick and duck. A car that was identical to the one used in the murder of FBG Duck was parked nearby, leading viewers to question why the gang would allow vloggers to record them less than a month after a gangland murder. When asked if he knew FBG Duck, he responded with a quick no, before nervously redirecting the cameraman's attention to the other members. Later in the interview, Boss Top called their old black chain a trophy and claimed they shouldn't be wearing it, causing even more suspicion. Although the most incriminating part of the interview was removed, the original comments remain, with many viewers pointing out that Boss Top had pointed directly at one of FBG Duck's shooters. However, it wasn't just Boss Top who was self-snitching, as other members of Old Block continued to leak incriminating information on social media. One such instance was when Big Woonie went live on Instagram and bragged about how they killed FBG Duck's homies. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The death of FBG Duck sparked outrage and led to the arrest of five members of the rival gang, Old Block, including Muwap, who was closely affiliated with King Von. The murder of FBG Duck was widely believed to be retaliation for his disrespect for lyrics and diss track against Old Block. The FBI played a role in the investigation as the agency sought permission to examine phone data associated with Charles C. Murder Liggins, Marcus Muwap Smart, and to Carlos Offord, who were all charged in the case. The FBI affidavit revealed that FBG Duck was a member of the STL slash EBT faction of the Gangsta Disciples, which had been feuding with Old Block, a faction of the Black Disciples. The vehicles used in the shooting were traced by investigators from Parkway Gardens to the murder scene, and the shooters fled after the attack. FBG Duck's girlfriend was shot twice in the left wrist and another person was shot three times and was left in critical condition. The FBI found a spent 357 caliber cartridge casing between the windshield and the hood of the Chrysler used in the shooting, which was consistent with the casing found at the murder scene of FBG Duck's murder. However, recently released records from an interview with an anonymous witness revealed the names of several individuals suspected to be involved in the death of FBG Duck. The witness spoke to the police officials on August 18, 2020, a few weeks after Duck's passing. Despite many of the names being blacked out, the witness stated that King Von allegedly placed a hit on Duck, starting at $50,000 and then increased it to $100,000. The witness also claimed that King Von allegedly purchased customized necklaces for certain Old Block gang members, who were allegedly accountable for Duck's murder. The FBI documents disclosed the names of the alleged shooters, including Marcus Smart, also known as Muwap, who purportedly carried out multiple killings on behalf of the Old Block Black Disciples. Another document identified the weapons used in FBG Duck's assassination, which is linked to numerous other murders in Chicago. After the papers were released, King Von's old tweet surfaced, stating that he and Duck had reconciled their differences before his demise. He added that they were discussing bringing everyone together to transform the community positively. However, FBG Duck's mother discredited these statements as lies. Finally, after the evidence was reviewed, Charles Liggins, also known as C. Murder, Kenneth Robertson, also known as Kenny and Kenny Mack, to Carlos Offord, also known as Los, Christopher Thomas, also known as C-Thang, and Marcus Smart, also known as Muwap, were arrested for the murder of Carlton Weekly, also known as FBG Duck, as well as for Rico charges. Now, since King Von is dead himself, there's no way for him to defend himself, so there's still the case of him being innocent until proven guilty. Conclusion the entire situation is a cesspool of gang violence, unfortunate upbringing, complicated gang affiliations, social media clout, and an endless cycle of violence. The deaths are painful, especially for those they leave behind. But no matter one's perception of King Von and FBG Duck, their legacy lives on through their music, a testament to lives that were cut short before they could truly bloom. 